Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Justin here, and today I've got the review for you of LG's flagship for the year of 2014, the G3. Although it did come a bit after HTC and Samsung had already released their flagships earlier this year, the S5 and the One M8, it could possibly still be the best smartphone we have seen yet in the year of 2014. By bringing to the table LG's great design reputation and many improvements made all around the device compared to its predecessor, the LG G2 from 2013, that packed with its flagship specs and certain features that kind of put LG a little bit ahead of the competition in terms of its technology definitely make it a great competitor for the year of 2014 and in my opinion a significantly better device than the LG G2. So starting out with the hardware, the first thing you're going to notice is the back construction. It is made out of plastic and it does actually have a metal look to it and initially a lot of people were actually confused by that thinking it was metal, but it is plastic, it is removable, it gives you very easy access to your battery, your micro SIM and your SD card slot. And I gotta say, although I do prefer metal phones most of the time, I think LG has done an amazing job as the device still feels extremely solid and the back piece doesn't fall off very easily or anything and the overall feel of it isn't too slippery as you may have experienced on something like the HTC One M8. The device also weighs in at 149 grams, comes in at 8.9 millimeters thick, and flipping it over to the bottom you will notice the micro USB port and your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the top you just have your IR blaster. One thing you will notice on the G3 is that the sides are extremely seamless. There really isn't anything protruding and normally where you would find buttons or your volume rockers isn't evident here. Once again LG has gone with back facing buttons. We saw that initially on the G2 and the LG Flex where under the camera you will see your sleep wake button as well as your volume rockers and after a few days you kind of do get used to it but initially it may feel a little bit weird. Personally I've kind of gotten used to it and I don't really mind it anymore but I'm still a bigger fan of the buttons being located on the side since my hands are pretty small and I find it a little bit more natural to have them located on the side. But if the buttons were to be located on the side I'm sure the bezels could not be this thin. On the inside of the device, you've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor that is quad core of course and clocked in at 2.5GHz and an Adreno 330 GPU. The North American model also featuring 3GB of RAM, 32GB of built in storage and SD card expandable up to 128GB. Under the hood you have a 3000mAh removable battery that also has built in wireless charging put into the back cover. On the back of the device, you will find a 1 watt speaker, which I have to say is pretty loud, but in terms of sound quality, it was just okay. So it's about time we put some attention over to the display. The LG G3 features a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440, what they would call the QHD or Quad HD display, with a whopping 538 PPI pixel density. And to my knowledge, it is the first device to officially hit North America with a Quad HD display, so definitely setting the tone for the future. The IPS panel is able to deliver some amazing colors and detail, of course what you would expect out of a 2560 by 1440 resolution display, and as you see every year, the resolution of displays and the PPI pixel density count seems to be going up incrementally. We've gone from the 300s with the Apple's Retina display up to the 400s, which seems to be where most devices are at right now with the Full HD panels, and now the LG G3 kind of, like I said, setting the tone for the future with a 538 PPI QHD display, which we should expect to see more on next year's flagships. I felt like the color representation on this display was absolutely beautiful and I would kind of put it in between a Samsung and an HEC display, HEC being more of a natural look while Samsung, as you may know, has a more saturated look. I would say that this panel kind of leans over to the natural look. It definitely has a very natural look to it, but when I did compare the display to something like the HTC One M8 or the iPhone 5S, which are known for the more natural look, it definitely looked pretty close. However, some colors did pop out a little bit more on the LG G3. And although at the moment you aren't really able to take advantage of this QHD display, eventually when apps are optimized to take advantage of the 2560 by 1440 resolution, the LG G3 will be ready, therefore this technology is pretty much just feature proofing it. But as you browse around the operating system, you will see that LG has tried to do their part in terms of allowing you to take advantage of the QHD display. The icons and the operating system in general of the LG Optimus skin definitely do look very nice. Even apps like YouTube still only allow you to view at 1080p, however some users have reported that they have been given the 1440p option for 4K resolution videos. I'm not one of them. But the great thing is, at least the LG G3 is setting the tone for the future and eventually more companies and developers will jump on to quiet displays and optimization of their apps. Definitely can't wait for that. 
Gaming on the LG G3 is also a great experience, and although like I said, a lot of apps aren't optimized to take advantage of this resolution, the games still look absolutely beautiful, and with that Adreno 330 GPU and the Snapdragon 801 processor, it can handle it like a boss. And with anything you throw at it, you shouldn't experience any issues whatsoever. The LG G3 runs Android 4.4 KitKat as well as LG's Optimus UI skin. From my experiences on the LG G2, the software was definitely the worst thing about the device. I absolutely hated it and it caused me to just get rid of the device and completely forget about it. It was heavily skinned and you can definitely feel that in the performance of the device. It was often sluggish, lagged on me, and I don't know if I was the only one or not, but my experience in terms of the software front of the G2 definitely ruined it. But this time around, I gotta say that LG has improved on that quite a bit. And although I would still call it a pretty heavily skinned UI in my opinion, they have definitely cleaned it up quite a bit compared to last year. The icons in general look very nice on this quiet issue display like I did mention, and let's just go into the OS. So obviously the menu is pretty much what you would expect. In general, it was pretty smooth with the occasional stutter, but I believe that it's just because I have the international model. And by holding on the home button, like we see on pretty much every device nowadays, it will take you directly to Google Now, and by sliding up, it will either allow you to go into Quick Memo or Google Now from anywhere. In the menu, as you expect, there is quite a bit of customization of not only your home screens, but being able to add apps, move them around very easily, and the level of customization I noticed was pretty much what you would expect. On the home screen, you also have the option to add a menu that pretty much gives you your smart tips and also the health app of LG, which seems to be what every company has nowadays. iOS 8 introduced that, Samsung has been trying to push that, but personally, I'm not sure who actually uses it and I'm definitely not one of them. On the home screen clock, you also have another notification about smart tips, so it seems like LG wants to have your resources in front of you in order to be able to take advantage of every feature of the device. Going into the drawer, it is pretty typical as well. All of your apps are obviously located there. Um, transparent background, you have your widgets on the top, a few options, edit, uninstall, hide apps, which is always great to have, and there's just a look at the widgets. So the next thing I want to take a look at was the keyboard. The LG G3's keyboard is probably one of my favorites, and although it isn't the most aesthetically pleasing compared to something like HTC, which by the way, it is a pain to type on, um, I gotta say that the LG G3 in terms of ease of typing um, and accuracy was probably the best. The auto correction on it was great, the word suggestion worked very, very well, and the placement of the keys and the numbers being on the top is always very convenient. And of course your recent app buttons will be on the bottom left. You can also reorientate the on-screen buttons, which is always nice as people are used to different things. I also wanted to show you the knock feature. As you know by now, the LG G3 does have the buttons located on the back. And by double tapping on the screen, it will turn it on. And by double tapping from anywhere, it will turn the screen off to sleep again. So for example, if you have your device located on your desk, it is very easy to do that if you can't always be accessing the back facing buttons. There is also something called knock code, which is kind of a passcode lock that take advantage of the knock feature. By setting your knock code, you just need to tap the pattern of the knock you set up and that will also unlock your device. Of course, you also have a backup passcode in case you forgot your knock code or it doesn't work. But the knock feature is definitely something I use quite a bit and it kind of compensates for the fact that you can't always access your back facing buttons. When it comes to the notification pull down and your quick toggle settings, I think visually they have definitely cleaned it up quite a bit. The one on the LG G2 was absolutely ugly and functionally it wasn't as effective as well. We often hit the wrong settings to get into the audio instead of our general settings. So you do have Q slide and you can also remove that if you don't want to have it. So that's always very good. Um, personally, I kind of like cleaner notification tab. I don't really want the toggles taking up too much space, but stuff like the brightness is always handy to have on your quick toggles. Along the top, you can also edit the quick toggle settings you have on there and add certain things that you use the most and things that you don't use, you can completely turn them off and not have them taking up space on your quick toggle settings. Moving on to the settings, you will see that everything again does have the nice flat icon look to it throughout the operating system, which is something I really like. It looks great on this Quad HD display. So you have your sharing connect such as the NFC and stuff like that. Personally, I do not use NFC for some reason. You also have your display settings, 
a lot of things here are just as expected. Lock screen where you can also set your knock code or change your knock code. And there's some gestures which I usually have turned off. I kind of think they're gimmicks so I'd never really tried out the gestures built into the devices. And you also have something called smart cleaning which brings up certain temporary cache files and stuff like that that may be taking up some space on your device's memory. And also a multitasking feature like we saw on Samsung Galaxy devices called dual window. And any device that has a display of 5 inches and over I think definitely should have this feature. It really allows you to take advantage of the screen real estate. But one of the things I really liked about the LG G3 is although it has a 5.5 inch display, it doesn't feel like a device with a 5.5 inch display since the overall form factor and the bezels make the device very easy to hold in the hand. The dual window pretty much works the same as the one we find on Samsung, being able to drag two applications and rescale them very easily and just close them both at once if you want to. You can have a video playing on one while you're trying to type up an email for example. but. I gotta say that the overall form factor and the screen real estate is a perfect balance on the LG G3. And on the G3 you also have the option to use the quick circle case which kind of has a window built into the case to view notifications and a clock face. I think that looks really cool but unfortunately I don't have one just yet. I have to say LG has done a much better job this year in terms of its software but I cannot wait to install Cyanogen Mod on this device. So the camera of any device is always a very exciting thing to talk about. The LG G3 sports a 13 megapixel rear facing camera with something that they call the laser autofocus which is probably one of my most favorite features of this device. With an f2.4 aperture, dual LED flash and also the ability to do 4K video and also a 2.1 megapixel camera on the front. And also not to forget optical image stabilization. When you take a look at the camera app, it is overall very simple. It actually has a right balance of having all of your features, but also the ability to hide them if you just want your photo to fill up the whole screen and just tap the screen to take your picture. That is the beauty of the laser autofocus. It is extremely fast and it is always tracking. And what the technology does is it sends lasers to the subject that it is focusing on. And as they bounce back, it determines the distance. And I'll tell you, it is probably one of the fastest autofocus systems I've seen on a device. When it comes to your mode, you don't really have too many. There's just the auto, the magic focus, panorama, and the dual shot. But I'm guessing most people just use it in auto and do your photos and videos that way. But I will say I don't feel like the features are lacking or anything. It pretty much has everything that I would want or need. When you take a look at some of the photos I took, I would say that the camera on this device is absolutely phenomenal. It was probably one of the best I have ever tried out. Paired up with its laser autofocus system, this is pretty much neck and neck with the camera on the Samsung Galaxy S5. With sunset shots being very hard to take, I put it to the test and it did a very good job in balancing the colors. It was able to capture a great amount of detail as you can even see in some of these macro shots and even the front facing camera did a very good job as well. Moving on to the video quality, I did say that this can and record 3840 by 2160 4K UHD video at 30 frames per second and it did a very good job. You can see the amount of detail this was able to capture in a smartphone camera and the optical image stabilization is definitely a plus for some. But even if that Quad HD display and great performance hasn't sold you already, I will say that the camera is easily one of the best I've ever tried out and is definitely a huge selling point of this device. This 4K video quality is able to record, I would just watch over and over again. So despite all the performance and that quad HD display that this device has to power, it does feature a 3000 mAh removable battery with wireless charging built into the back piece. I was easily able to get through one full day, if not halfway into my second day, and I am actually very impressed considering it does have to power 2560 by 1440 resolution, 538 ppi, 5.5 inch display. I would imagine that does take a lot of power, but it doesn't seem like it's holding it back at all. And the fact that the battery is not only massive, but it is also replaceable and swappable within seconds with a replacement battery that you may have recharged just allows this device to run for a very long time. And I definitely don't mind the plastic construction. Like I said, LG did a very good job with that and the trade-off of being removable is definitely worth it. So now it's time to wrap up my thoughts on the LG G3. I will say that it is arguably the best flagship Android smartphone we have seen to date this year. Of course, we still have about half a year to go, but as of now, I think the LG G3 and what LG has done kind of puts it a step ahead from its competition. 
And although I will admit that I wasn't overly excited for this device, after my experience with the LG G2, and I'm still not a biggest fan of the software, I think LG has done a very good job on this device, and I have to conclude by saying that it is absolutely awesome. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and be sure to hit that like button if you did, as it helps out the channel a lot, and subscribe for some future coverage, and I'll see you all in the next video.